I've always seen this on this channel. People come back after a result has gone the other way to we've predicted and be like, ha, I told you. So that and more coming up as myself and Angelina are here for another Q&A. The Champions League quarterfinals are underway um, and there's lots of rumours and lots of transfer talk. So let's get straight into it. You could start. Okay, so first question is from Pranav Kalra. So, thoughts on the rumour that Cristiano Ronaldo is planning to move to PSG? I'm not sure whether he's specifically planning it. I feel like it would be more Juventus planning it. Mm. If I, I mean, there was talk the other day that he's been offered to clubs and that they've told his agent to, to find him more clubs because... He's just got such a ridiculous wage. And I feel like lots of players are in this position now. The wage is too much for Juventus to continue to viably keep him on in the squad. But then also, it's that much and that ridiculous that who else is going to pay it? Yeah. If he was to leave, where else would he go apart from PSG? Back to Real? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I you so. could... Apart from unless you're talking about maybe the Chinese League or America. Yeah. And I can't see... I can, I can see him doing America eventually. I'm not sure if I can see him going to the Chinese League for some reason. No. But... Yeah. I feel like the MLS don't even pay those ridiculous wages. Mm. Like when the MLS paid, you know, Rooney to come over or Beckham... Or Zlatan. It wasn't on that level, I guess. Yeah, it was a lot of money for for their squad, but it still wasn't Ronaldo level. Money. Yeah. It still wasn't what he's gonna be demanding at the moment, having just scored mm. thirty one goals in Syria, and you know it's still at the top of his game. Um, I don't it think actually makes happen. sense, doesn't it? But yeah. yeah. They're the only one who's got enough money. That's probably where that rumour comes from. Um, yeah. Next up, Raganka Majumdar has said, do you think Odegaard and Ceballos will get regular playing time after coming back on loan as Real Madrid already have so many options in the midfield? If not, what's the point in bringing loan new players just to be squad players? Okay, so I think with this situation, it depends on who's staying. Mm. Um, I think you've got, obviously, Modric is like, what, 34? Um could potentially leave but at the same time he's saying like listen I'm happy to stay here till the end of my career or whatever so Cruz 30 you know made like what 35 appearances in the league pretty solid person in the team you've got Valverde who's like a young 22 year old mm. player so you kind of got that young player in that central midfield role yeah. you're looking more at I mean you've got Rodriguez who is pretty likely to leave Isco, although he seems to be playing a little bit more, I feel like he's 28, he's still a decent player. I feel like he's one of them that they could sell, yeah. get an all right amount of money for and, and move forward. Um, I think at the moment with them lining up with kind of Casemiro more in that defensive uh, midfield role, you've got like, you've got those two players. You could maybe swap in, you know, between Cruz, Modric, Valverde, but then having two more people to consider as well, I don't, I wouldn't have called them both back. Um, I, I, I just... the, the issue for me is that I agree that what's the point in bringing them back if they're not going to play? But from Real Madrid's point of view, it makes complete sense. Yeah. At the end of this question is, what's the point of bringing loan players just to be squad players? Because everyone needs squad players. That's it. Because, you know, Real Madrid rely on the same old team week in, week out. You need squad players, and buying squad players is a lot more difficult than just bringing them back from loan. Mm. If you're buying a player that's good enough for Real Madrid, right, that's going to cost you a bit of money, that's going to be proven that he's good enough for Real Madrid, mm. but then he's happy to come in and just sit on the bench. Yeah. Doesn't quite make sense. So buying a squad player, buying someone and saying, hey, yeah, you're not actually going to play this be part of the squad, is very, very difficult. So this is an easier option. Um, I think for Odegaard, he's proven that he's had a brilliant season um, mm. and that he probably can handle the level or certainly grow into the squad. I don't think he'd be demanding regular minutes. So it's good to have another option. In the case of Danny Ceballos, yeah, he's a good squad player to have. I, I have a sneaky feeling that Ceballos that they want money for him. Mm. That Real Madrid have decided, you know what, he's probably not our level. Arsenal really wanted him back on loan. 
right? So we'll just take him back. And then if Arsenal want him that bad, they'll pay some money mm. for him. You know, you can't be you can't be having Sabas on loan every single season in the hope yeah. that he comes good. Mm. After a few years, you'd be like, you know what? He's not working for us as a Real Madrid player. I might as well make 20, 25 million on him. Exactly, Bit of extra yeah. cash. So, mm. yeah. Oh, also, there was really love this channel. Love from India. Missed that bit out at the end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, are you up next? No, it's me up next. So, this is from Vishnu Mayesh. So, who should Juventus target to revamp their midfield? Against Leon, they looked poor in the middle of the park and Ronaldo had little service. Oh, this was, I saw this being like the main reason they lost. Everyone's like, it's not Ronaldo's fault. There was just, there was just little service. <laughs> like Defend him till the end. Yeah. There was, there was quite poor service, but you know, I think that the team overall, Ronaldo did as much as he could. The team overall is not good enough. I think the middle of the park, they are fixing it. I'm actually, um, yesterday did a video on this, which you guys can can see, I'm gonna leave it around here somewhere. Um, about how Juventus midfield will line up next season, I think Rabiot's come quite good. He's certainly been improving in his performances, um, but they just, for me, they have a dead weight issue. Mm. And as soon as um, you know Arthur's coming in as well, so Arthur and Rabiot as yeah. a, a uh, Rabiot as a double pivot is quite good. As soon as they have an injury and the likes of Matuidi or Kadira or Bentacor come in. They're just not at the same level and it weakens them significantly. Ben's core, maybe that's a little bit harsh, actually. He's still quite a good player. Um, and yeah, Pia Pjanic is obviously um, leaving as well and hasn't quite got the legs to be a kind of um, all-impact player in the centre of midfield, which you're seeing more and more of um, around European football. And I think next season, if it was for me, and I say I mentioned it in this video, I'd Arthur Rabio is very, very good. Um, I would go for someone who can kind of do a bit of everything alongside that as well. Because then you've mm. got three central midfielders who pretty much cover all bases of what midfielders need to do. I'd say yeah. Sandro Tonali from, from Brescia. That was my, um, that's my kind of tip. I know he's been linked with Inter Milan, um, but I think he's doing pretty well. The other one is Tangi and Dombele, who they're being linked with. Yeah. And because uh, Pogba, apparently, this is quite a wild link. Pogba's too expensive. And Doble's not had the best years at Spurs. I don't think Spurs will sell, though. No. And they certainly won't sell for a price which Juve are going to be willing to pay. Mm. Unless, sorry, it's a ridiculous price that, that, that Juve aren't be willing to pay. So, yeah, I, I don't think... I also think they've got a, a real big question to make. Do they prioritise building the team around Dybala or Ronaldo? I mean, the team around Ronaldo is going to be 36 this season. For me, doesn't make sense as no, much as he Dybala. is a, a brilliant player. He's not going to be doing what he did at Real Madrid and staying for you know, however many yeah. years. And they're going to get all this time out of him. Like you say, it's his age at the end of the day. Why not build around someone who's mm. a bit younger? Makes yeah, sense. exactly. Um, right, next up, Chelsea FC. You said, do you think Valencia setting their midfielders is the right move? No, <laughs> I just, from the outside looking in, it's ridiculous. It looks mad. Um, I mean, a part of me is thinking like they must be confident in the players they've got. I mean, I know that there is a lot of upset, especially with one of the owners who actually owns part of Salford City FC, I think. Which yeah, is Peter Lim, in Manchester. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if maybe he's, I don't know, thinking he's going to move a few players over there. Who knows? But um, I just think if they would have sold those two players for like big money, then more than like, what, eight million. Yeah. Um, I would have thought maybe they've got other people in the pipeline that they're looking at bringing in. And it was more just like getting a bit of money in. But the fact that they sold for so cheap is like, what are they doing? Just clearing out. Um, you'd think they have players in mind to sign, but there's not really been any rumours. I know they've got a few players, especially in midfield, that have been out on loan. I think they've got a guy called um, Condogbia, sorry if I said that wrong, in yeah, midfield, yeah. who's played quite a lot. Um, so I think they do have players, but I just, I don't understand it personally. I don't think anyone understands it. I don't think the fans understand it. Unless there is something in the pipeline that we all don't know about. Um, it's a, I'd, If I was a, a fan, I'd, I'd be concerned. 
Yeah, I'm not sure this is a strictly player-related issue. Mm. As in moving, you know, one or two players about and we've got better midfielders and we can kind of bring through you talents. I'm not sure it's that. I think it's yeah. something to do with the board. Either yeah. Lim is trying to get off some debts um, and sell up or he's just trying to recoup as much money. I mean, they've put the whole squad up for sale apart from, I believe, Carlos Soler. I may mm. be wrong. There may be another one. But I believe the whole Valencia squad is up for sale. Um, so whether or not there, there must be something else. It can't just be a case of, you know what, we had a poor season, we're going to make wholesale no. changes and bring in new players. There has to be something else going you, on you, there. You wouldn't be getting rid of your captain. Well, uh, yeah. Well in, that, in that situation, and especially for such a small amount of money. Exactly. That's why it doesn't make sense to me. I know he had some issues with, with the chairman. Um, Danny Parejo was the captain mm. of a brilliant season. Um, 31 years old isn't exactly young, but he's definitely not old. He's got a few good years. No. Um, yeah, th there's something else going on there. But yeah, as you said, from the outside, it just looks so bizarre. Mm. Just looks such a weird... So and, and, and as well to a team like Villarreal, who with one or two good players could be pushing Valencia, you know, and sort of being in the mix in and around them as well, like almost as a direct rival. Mm. I just... I mean, no one's talking about Francis Coquelin because he's not very good. But <laughs> but Parejo it was brilliant. And yeah, I really... It'd be interesting to see what happens, whether he sells or not, whether he sells the club. I mean, obviously they need a bit of money. They also sold Ferran Torres to Manchester City for yes, 25 million. Um, obviously they didn't want to lose him on a free, but it sounds like he didn't have the best relationship with one or two in the squad. Things aren't right. I think that's what we can all agree on. Very true. We'll have to see what happens, I guess. Um, next question. This is from Sion, S-E-U-N. So, do you think PSG has a chance against Bayern or City because they are heavily, heavily reliant on just two individuals, while City and Bayern are much more well-rounded? I mean, first off, this is assuming that PSG make it to the final. Mm. Because, um, because they've got a semi-final to play first. Yeah. Um, heavily reliant on two individuals they are of course they are we spoke about it last week they're very heavily reliant and I think we talk about it every week this is a quick reminder for everyone who keeps asking who do you think is going to win the Champions League I still think <laughs> it's going to be Bayern Munich yeah I did a video on it I've said it me and Anthony have said it like a billion different times in the yeah. Q&A we still think <laughs> it's going to be Bayern Munich they're the best overall all-round team this season I think um but as we saw in the in the Atlanta game in the quarterfinals for PSG, anything can happen in the blink of an eye. You know, they they huffed and they puffed and they were, you know, every time they shot, it seemed like the ball was flat. Mm. Right, and then in the space of what was it, 140 seconds, they got two goals right at the end, and boom, you're done. Yeah. So I think yes, they, they have a chance, but I'd also agree, yeah, City or Bayern um, or whoever. Barca, whoever makes it to the final, um, probably have a more rounded team. But then again, isn't that kind of what football is? Like, it's quite unusual to have such a solid, well rounded team because everyone's got a team full of players who do their job and then one or two stars. Mm. You know, you wouldn't, it, it would be the same with Barcelona. Yeah. You know, the team do the rest of the job and you let Messi kind of take the plaudits and do the main bit. Mm. Same sort of thing. So, yeah, they've got a chance. As long as players like Neymar and Mbappe, which they can, can you know flip a game on its head just like that with an incisive pass or a quick run, you're always going to have a chance. Yeah. Uh, right, Wrestling World's next. Uh, should people really think that Barcelona have got no chance against Bayern? Um, I don't think you can say that they've got zero Yeah, chance. that's a bit harsh. <laughs> that is very harsh. I mean, Barcelona are still a good team and um, mm. they have a lot of history uh, in this competition they have a lot of experience in this competition they want this trophy and um, so I don't think you can completely rule them out I think the issue is more like I say they've got a good team but do I think they're up for the challenge maybe not I mean who am I looking at that's going to be you know making an impact getting goals I mean obviously you've got Suarez, Messi you know, an experienced player like Vidal, maybe, yeah. Dijon, maybe, but I I don't look at the team as a whole versus Bayern, where I think Bayern's threat comes from all over the pitch. And I yeah. think that's the difference. And like you said, you know, 
no shame in having your star players, your Messi, your Suarez, your Mbappe, your Neymar and everything. But I just think Bayern as a whole will just overpower them. I mean, Barca have got to try and stop their creativity, but I just think that Barcelona's presence on the pitch is heavily reduced when you compare it to Yeah. To, that's all. And I, I think as well, it's, it's, it's important to mention, because I know I've always seen this on this channel, People come back after a result has gone the other way to we've predicted and be like, ha, I told you. <laughs> and it's not saying that, look, if Barcelona win because Messi does something brilliant, then you just you hold your hands up and say, you know yeah. what, they won. But overall, yeah, when comparing the two teams, Bayern are far better, a mm. far, are far more of a powerhouse. And look, I'd be amazed if Barcelona dominated the game. Same. I would, I would be utterly amazed if they were brilliant and they won two or three nil and there was a whimper from Bayern and they just crashed out the competition. I'd be utterly amazed. It's not to say Barca can't win. I just think it might be, you know, off the back it of... It wouldn't be that kind of win. No. It would be a scrappy... It would be a moment of brilliance. Goal. Yeah, exactly. A moment it's of brilliance from Messi. Agreed, 100%. Yeah, I, so you can never rule them out for that specific reason? Yeah. Okay, so last question. This is from Arjun Sharma. So, what is your favourite sports movie? Mine would be Rocky for Sylvester Stallone. is just amazing. I've actually met Sylvester Stallone. Really? Yeah. Tell us. Oh, it was um, somebody, a friend of mine, was very, very obsessed with the Rocky films and paid for us all to go to this meet and greet thing in Manchester. So, yeah, I've got a photograph somewhere of me and Sly kicking it, chilling. Did you do so, the classic, like, um, boxer pose? No, I'll be honest, I was a little bit scared. <laughs> because, you know, when you... And that's probably the, the main moment I've kind of been starstruck because I have watched a lot of his films. I was just yeah. like, oh, my God, this is actual Sylvester Stallone. Oh so I was God. just very quiet and just smiled and moved. <laughs> but nice. I, I would go Rocky 3. Rocky 3. Rocky 3, oh my God, the emotion in Rocky 3. I feel like we had this con this conversation a few months back and we were talking about goal. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was, yeah. That was favourite football film. Yeah. Favourite sports favorite movie. Sport. I'm going with Rocky 3. I'm going I'm with Moneyball. Have you okay. seen it? I've not seen it. With Brad Pitt and... Um, oh, I've heard, yeah, I've not watched it, but I've seen it. I've his name. Is it Jonah Hill? And Brad Pitt, and there's all about Billy Bean and baseball, and mm. it's fascinating. Really, it's not quite like a like a sports movie in the sense of action, mm. but it's it's super it's super story. interesting. Mm. Also, um, Coach Carter was really good as well. Coach Carter, oh, yeah, yeah. you can't go. That Coach is Carter. that is that's fantastic. Soundtrack, storyline, yeah, actors, yeah. Big fan, amazing. right? That is amazing. <laughs> That's a good question to end on. Anyway, thank you guys, as always, um, for all of your questions. Yeah, every Wednesday night in the YouTube community tab is where you can find them. And uh, yeah, be sure to let us know all of your thoughts in the comment section below, including your favourite sports movie of all time. Um, hit, the, hit the like button and look out for the Q&A extras coming out as well this weekend. But from myself and Angelina, until next time, we will see you guys later.